thank you for being a guest here on the Velvet Brick Summit. Um, I want my picture to be grainy so you can't see my handsome face because women would go absolutely bonkers watching this thing. <laughs> That's <laughs> ladies, <sure>. and gentlemen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, in front of us right now is Mr. Mark Mason. Um, I call him the Lion King. So <laughs> me compared to him as the Lion King, you can call me Pumbaa. That's facts. Uh, this young man has had great success to this point in his life, and he's only 31 years old. And I'm going to let him tell you his story because it has uh, meaning to it. It's not a tearjerker, but I do remember at one point I, I was with him driving to, I believe we were driving down the Cape, and I just said out loud, I said, man, Mark, your father must be really proud of you. You know what he said to me? I don't know my dad. And I've heard many people in life say, well, if I had a dad or I had a mother, I'd be better off. Guess what? Bullshit. It's called excuses. So that being said, Mr. Mark Mason, I want you to tell your story raw and uncut, my friend. Oh, all right. Well, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be uh, one of the first guests on Velvet Brick. I swear I won't let you down. That's how I lions, That's how lions do. <laughs> um all right so everybody i am mark mason i'm 31 years old um i am an entrepreneur uh i am a owner of a real estate company called east side home solutions rcl mechanical co-owner and the river house restaurant which many of you guys know if you're local um you know i feel like a lot of them came uh, a lot of the success came in the recent years because, uh, you know, it's, it hasn't been easy. You know, it's, it's real it, uh, success is, you know, is earned with consistency and discipline over years. And um, now I'm seeing the fruits of the labor, right? Uh, so, you know, it's, it's been a struggle, you know, I, I got into the real estate game in 2014 when I still had a full-time job. Uh, I since have quit and worked for myself since 2000 and it's 2019, I think. So uh, I was doing both at the same time. I was probably rehabbing about 10 to 15 houses a year while at my full-time job. Um, and then, you know, I didn't, and it wasn't that I didn't want to leave my full-time job. I think I was just, I think I was just comfortable and I knew I could manage it both. And I, it was always that cushion. It's like, ah, do I do it? Do I do it? But ultimately, as Steve knows, um, it was easy to make that decision once I opened up our sale mechanical and I had the, the restaurant as a, uh, as a safety net. <laughs> and he says that because I was taught that lesson later in life. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm just going to interject here, Mark. You know, you said you learned uh, over the years. And I'm sure a lot of people sitting there going, over the years, he's only 31. I think there's a, there's a there's something within each driven entrepreneur that is not given, if that makes sense. Uh, I know a lot of people look at the tree of success. They look at the leaves. They don't look at the roots. And so I want you to get to the roots because velvet brick is something that we're going to throw at a lot of people's heads. They're not going to like yeah, it, so. and that's fine. No, no, absolutely. So I will, uh, I'll, st I'll start off with telling you guys that, uh, so middle school was a tough, was tough for me. Uh, my childhood was, my childhood growing up was a little, a little scarce. I did have great grandparents that took me in. Uh, but ultimately, uh, I grew up with no father and, uh, you know, my mother died at a very early age, um, which I did not let get in my way of the path that I wanted to go. Uh, and one of those things that helped me out was being always being surrounded by people that were, you know, that, that were good to me, that I knew were going places and positive energy. So um, I think the, the moral of the story is, is just like you, you surround yourself by these good people and the rest will follow. You'll go, you'll naturally go down the right path and go over the right bridge, I should say, you know? So, um, so other than not having parents, um, my childhood was, was pretty decent. You know, I, my, my grandparents took me in, um, my grandfather passed away when I was young and my grandmother raised four of us from 2000, August of 2000 to, um, she passed away about two and a half years ago, right in the beginning of COVID. So, um, and I gave her the life that I wanted to give her through 
real estate and my businesses. You know, I, I had her the past, the last three or four years, five years of her life. She lived, um, you know, mortgage free, you know, she had the financial freedom as somebody would, you know, and that was, that was success to me. Right. That was like, that that's was what it's all life. about, Mark. That's what it's all about. And you've learned that at a young age. It, it's not about the money. It's no, about what you problems. can do. With, it's what you can do with the money. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, it was good. That that was the probably most fulfilling part of my life yet. So, um, so yeah, so you know, here I am. I go through middle school. I was troubled, always in uh, suspension, getting you know, getting caught up in the weeds. High school, um, I always had a good heart, good friends. Um, still, you know, I like to mess around. We, you know, we're in high school, teenagers. We fucked around. So, um, but junior years were really stuck because. Junior year, I had my shop teacher was looking at me out in the eyes and I took plumbing, right? I took plumbing and he's like, you know, Mark, you know, you, you're failing out. Like you, this is, this is your last shot. Like if you're going to turn around now, like if you want to go to senior year and graduate high school, you need to, you know, pass the semester. But, all right. You know, I kind of had some tears. I'm like, shit, I got to get my shit together. Um, ultimately, I got my shit together. I went out on co-op. The next year for plumbing, got a taste of the moolah, pesos. the pesos, and I'm like, ooh, this is cool. But throughout that high school, the, throughout the high school years, I still had that hustler's ambition. I was the ringtone in the Nextel guy. You know, I was pushing Nextels, swapping people, pay, so you know, selling phones, putting ringtones on phones. I was selling sodas. I was selling candy bars. I go, I go to market basket up a 24 pack of Snickers, boom, two bucks <laughs> each. And you know, my, my shop teachers are just an academic teachers were laughing their ass. I was like, dude, what is wrong with this guy? You know, right. but they didn't know. You know now they know. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, you know, you fast forward to today. Um, that gave me the, that gave me the, the energy and the passion to entrepreneurship so uh you know after high school i got into i got a full-time job luckily i was making really good money as an apprentice plumber uh working for a large mechanical company i worked for them probably from 2012 11 to uh 2019 and uh you know once i had the money and i had the hustlers i knew i had the hustlers ambition i started doing side work you know i'm a plumber of course hey my water yeah. heater hey my furnace oh boom so i get out of work at two three o'clock i go out to uh you know i go do side work and i remember to this day with my business partner now at rcl we had a job we did a boiler in centerville massachusetts and we left our full-time job at like 2 30 drove down there put the boiler in, drove back in my like 2001 Chevy van that we bought for 2,500 bucks that was rusted to shit. And it was like, I want to say it was like three o'clock in the morning. And then we got back up in the morning and went to our full-time job. That's awesome. That, that's right, so that right there, that's, ladies and gentlemen. That, that story is funny because now today, me and my business partner that we, you know, we, we had those dreams in the, in the, in the van that we didn't know we, we yeah. didn't have money. And now we are are going to be an eight figure company this year. So that is amazing, um, amazing, so, ama amazing. So Dang. yeah, um, so yeah, that's how it started. And then uh, you know, RCL obviously came way down the line, twenty twenty. But in two thousand fourteen, I bought my first real estate deal on a auction. That auction consisted of Hubzoo.com. I bought a three family for one hundred seventy eight thousand dollars. Unheard of today. I, I thought it was a. I thought I was getting ripped off at that rate. <laughs> try then. to buy one now. Try to buy one now with a one in front of it. <laughs> so the and you guys, you guys that don't are not in real estate, you should listen up because this is this is being fearless. This is, um, you know, just not knowing what's on the other side, but just trusting your gut. I uh, I went into for a mass housing loan, five percent down. You know, my realtor said, you know, you got to go in and you got to get this thing FHA approved. You got to put railings up. You got to patch the wall. You got to get the electric on, get the water on. I'm like, all right, no problem. I'm on it. What's the lockbox? She's like, bum, 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 bum. You didn't hear from me. 
go in there with all my buddies, you know, the close five that I have, we go in there, they get the mud out, they get the railing out, half-ass railing, boom, boom. You know, I call TMLP. Sorry, Lee. Uh, I call TMLP. I'm like, hey, I own the home. Can you put the lights on? Boom. I pay the deposit, put the lights on in the house. And I went and bought a water meet, uh, water curb cop key, turned the water onto the house, jumped it out with a, a garden hose, and I got water in the house. <laughs> I said, I said, let's go. Bring the appraisal in. I bring yeah. the appraisal in. You know, everything goes well. It goes back to the bank. The bank says, Mark, this is a high risk loan. I said, what's that? They said, you know, it's just too risky for us to do. I'm like, okay. She's like, we can't do the loan. He's like, we can't do the loan. I'm like, all right, well, we close in about two and a half weeks and I have, you know, or three weeks and I have, uh, I have like 5,000 in earnest money that I cannot get back from the auction company. They're like, well, sorry, you should call this woman. Maybe she can help you. Just another bank. It was Randolph Savings Bank. I called that woman. She had a heart of gold. She gave my loan my all she closed me in like two and a half three weeks um went through hoops and back because she 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 just believed in me she's like you know i can just i i remember the conversation it's crazy she believed in me so i went in i uh what i did was i i went in i got everything going all the utilities on she we had to get another appraisal because it was a different bank Go in, I get the appraisal. She closes the loan. Who knows that she did not know that day that I would bring her probably 48 other loans. Absolutely. I've, I've left, I, I've done about probably 25 myself and probably, um, I think she said I, I referred maybe 21 or 22. So that day, did she know she was going to close 50 fucking loans? Nope. Nope. Not a chance, but she trusted her gut. She trusted me. Got it. I bought the house. I rehabbed it. I ran out of money. I went and got a credit card and I maxed out $60,000 on the credit card, paid all my subcontractors with tools because that's all I could buy at Home Depot with the credit card, right. maxed it out. And now today, uh, I mean, well, maxed it out. And then at the end of the day, I refinance, you know, we're gonna, we'll get into it. I'll tell you about yep, the yep. strategy. I refinanced, um, you know, I pulled out the money. I pulled out the $60,000 that I put into it and my blood, sweat and tears. And then I uh, went on to the next one. I rented it out, and it was it was history from there, you know. And then it's I was a ca like, it's a cash flow king, correct? Cash cow, you cash know. I mean, it's probably cow. It's probably a seven hundred thousand dollars house right now. Six exactly. But here's and, the beauty uh, that uh, here's the beauty that a lot of people don't understand. And I think I told you this the other day that my mentor told me, Mark, how many, how many times can you buy a single family house? Once. How many times can you buy multi multi families? Much as you want. Thank you. And what does multifamilies do? Generate income. And they can pay for your what? Your single family house? If they all okay. pay for your single family and all your toys and everything else you want, you know? Just saying facts. But you're, you know what you're doing? You're validating me, which is awesome. Because yeah. I, and I'll tell you this now, and I'll tell you this at the end of the program. I am honored and uh, uh, just humbled by having you in my corner that's it appreciate it yeah man. we help each Great. other out we bring we bring different things to the table well i bring good looks and talking i don't know what the hell you bring yeah yeah you, you bring speaking i don't know about the good looks but you bring the speaking you know <laughs> steve just my turn me, to, uh, it's not my turn to talk <laughs> steve just got me uh all set up for a speaking event i had he you know he came in and smacked the shit out of me and i ended up uh <laughs> killing him changing some lives and inspiring a bunch of people. So it was good. So I got that house. <laughs> so I got that house, uh, refinanced it, rented it out. And it was just the easiest thing I've ever done uh, after that. You know, I mean, I mean, I probably been to the house 20 times since then. And you how know, long ago did you buy it? I want, I want to no, make that point. Go ahead. How long ago did you buy it? 2014. And what, what year is this? 2022. And how many times have you been to the house? Probably 20 times. Okay, so when someone says, I don't want to do a multifamily house because I don't want to be a landlord. Is that the dumbest statement ever? Yes, it's, uh, you know, okay. if you if you have any organization in your life and you can plan it all and you don't have a high stress level, like things happen all the time, you know, but it's just a, it's just a text message. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I got, you know, I got an answer. Okay, 
hey, Mr. Pet, 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 pet person, you go over there and, and spray. Boom, $99. Okay, it shuts them up for the next, for that year. So, you know, that was the start of a, a, a crazy, crazy real estate fucking roller coaster. <laughs> That's my man. You know, so here we are today. Um, I went on a rampage during the upswing of the market. Uh, I probably flipped over a hundred houses. Uh, I got unbelievable. As of today, I just locked up six units, so I believe I have thirty six units, and uh, I am working on the biggest developments of my life right now that probably consist of over a hundred units. Um, That's my man. And I still, like I told everybody on Saturday night, I still don't know how I'm going to get the money for those hundred units. Doesn't matter. But it don't matter because if you if you find the money for a single family, it's the same thing for a multifamily. It's just a bigger project, and everybody gets nervous. And you don't have to. It's just nope. You stick. You stick to it. You plan. You execute. You find the resources, and that's and you, you and you do. are a planner, my friend. Because I remember when I worked, I still work with you. I remember when you told me the formula in order to purchase a house, of, you know, if we're going to do an offer on a flip. And I said, yep. this is stupid. And I did it, and I'm like, oh, my God, he's absolutely right. And you don't deviate from that. You do not deviate from that formula. No. I can tell you, Mark, this house, this ARV is going to be 700000 but we have to cost 300000 You're like, nope, because I'm going to use this formula. And I've been using your formula, and you're absolutely correct. Now, we must tell people nowadays, you will not find a property for hundred grand. It's not going to happen. The fix and flips, I always start with two. But again, this is an educational thing, but this is not this segment. Uh, and if you want to reach out to Mark, we'll tell you how to reach out to him later on in the, in the program. And he'll be more than happy to share with you how to get into, you know, fix and flips. And it ain't watching HGTV. And that's facts. Sorry, Mark. You know how I get. <laughs> Just say. Go ahead. Yeah. Speak. Yeah, that's definitely facts. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Anybody want to read? If anybody wants to reach out to me after, you're more than welcome um instagram facebook either one works um i can get you guys linked up on uh whatever you need uh but let me see if i can get into anything else i want to drop some value here um so after i think that, you, I, th I think you can stop now because i'm pretty much shook up and i want to go i want to go i want to go to work right now <laughs> <laughs> you know me oh, you know cool. me i'm sending you i'm sending you texts at 3 a.m in the morning i need a, i need some more houses let's go i'm getting slow Dude, I, got, I, got, I got plenty. You're just not answering. You know, you, listen, let's not start a fight on, on, on this program. <laughs> just saying. Live, live. Yeah, exactly. How much more time do we have? Uh, about uh, 10 minutes, my man. Go ahead. Knock minutes? it out. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, all right. So here we are. We uh, we, we get the, the real estate. We, we finished the first real estate deal. We get into, I still have the full-time job. And now we're moving on to um, the rest of the journey. So real estate obviously created a ton of opportunity. Once I get into real estate, I got addicted to it, passionate about it. I built my reputation and authority in my area. Man, it created more opportunity for me for partnerships, um, my resume for lending, and all that good stuff. So today, you know, like I said, I was the owner of three businesses. In 2020, I opened up RCL Mechanical um, because I built my, built my reputation and authority they wanted to partner with me and they knew they knew they did so because of the service you provided because of the service at the, you provided. at the end of the day mark it's about service and i'm not again i'm not saying this to impress you but impress upon you i've heard about your service i've heard about your employees because yeah. the fish rots from the head down so when people especially where i work and i won't say the franchise but i'm pretty sure everybody's gone there they sell hot they sell coffee and donuts the problem is the <laughs> employees and everybody's like, oh, it's not my fault. At the end of the day, RCL is Mark Mason and his partner. And they treat their employees like they're, they're in charge. They give them that authority. A hundred percent. hundred percent. To this, actually just happened last week. We got our first one-star Google review. And I was beside myself. I just said, <laughs> you know, I'm like, all right. Like, all right, let's take this in. And it was just, it was just someone had a bad day. They took it out on us, you know, yeah. you know. For whatever reason, it wasn't even bad service. It was just like, I think we You know what that is, Mark? And I, I got this book. I'll let you read it. It's called The Law of the Dump Truck. Yeah. That's the name of the book. And the reason, okay. the premise of the book is people have trash in their head every single day. And when they 100%. meet somebody, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna say to them, how's your day? Or let me tell you about my day. Here comes their trash. So 100%. Your service was not, was not bad. 
that person just no. had trash If they paper. had a bad day, you know, when I said to my service manager, I said, hey, uh, you know, they actually had a business. They were a lawyer. So I'm like, you know what? Drive to Brockton, go in their office and talk to them. See yeah. what's going on. They went there. The woman started crying and said, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I had a bad day. I would have never thought you guys would have showed up here. You know, she she turned the five star. She turned a one star into a five star and admitted that she, you know, she shouldn't have done that. And now she is a lifelong member because she bought a uh, membership with us. And she was just ecstatic. But she's like, I, I would never have thought that you guys would have came here. Like, nobody cares about that stuff. We went That's to service. Week, you know? we, it is what it is. We we live by our core values. One of our core values is go the extra mile. And, and it's uh, customer service. And and I, yeah. and again, this is me just being velvet brick. And if you don't like it, tough shit. At the end of the day, we've lost touch with how to treat other people. That's just that's just that, that's how I that's that's how I'm getting down right now. Yeah. It is what it is. And I won't surround myself with people who don't want to be like that. So any of you that think you know me, you don't. You knew me. Mark knows me. Makes sense because yeah. he knew me and now he knows me. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I know it's a corny saying: treat people the way you want to be treated. Period. Hundred percent. Sorry, you know how I get mocked. I'm sorry, I got a comment. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. So yeah, that was it. Opened up RC Mechanical right there. Uh, right before that was uh, River House. Um, that was just another opportunity that was created. And you, you know, opened that see, during COVID, correct? Opened that during COVID. I, yeah, how'd you do in sales? And how'd you do? In, how'd you do in sales with COVID? The first full year in business, we did three million. Thank you. Crushed it. Crushed Anybody it want to make excuses? Because, because yeah, exactly. Because everybody else. Mark, let's high five was, quick. Yeah, yeah. Ping. <laughs> so everybody else was nervous to do it, and I, I sat down. I'm like, this is a huge risk. You know, I mean, not only am I going to go renovate this building, you know. You know, all of this stuff, drop this money into a restaurant. The restaurant's the number one failing business in the world. You know, I'm like, you know, everybody else is doing the opposite right now. I'm gonna yeah. fucking open this thing up. Right, I'm gonna get this thing to the finish line and then we're gonna we're gonna kill it. And you know what happened was it was it's just like I always talk opportunity because I never turn down something. And right. whenever I do whenever I don't, I'm like, yes, because next thing you know, we we come into COVID. We have the two best years ever. Then we get all these credits and government money from, you know. <laughs> you got to love from, the government. If, if, for COVID. And I'm just like, it boosted our business up more. More people wanted to come. We got more money for marketing. We got, it's just like, it's just crazy. I'm like. With that know, restaurant, just like all your other businesses, is based on what, Mark? Service. I've yeah. been to you. I've been to your establishment. The service is top notch. And again. I'm not saying this because we're friends. I'm not saying it to impress you, just to press upon you. As soon as you walk in the door, the grid is like, hey, welcome to blah, blah, blah. What can we do? What can we get? You know, you're not yeah. waiting a half hour for your food. It doesn't come out cold. It doesn't come out undercooked. It's just facts. I mean, yep. I haven't been back on a VIP because apparently I don't rate, but it is what it is. I'll just go to You've another. Listen, I'll way. just You've go to another. I'll me. just go to another Velvet Brick Summit uh, members restaurant. I think it's called, is it Brax? <laughs> oh damn did i do that mark no then hey the best of luck to everybody we all win together we, we all ride together you know? so, <laughs> listen i think you know once we all once we finish this beautiful thing we'll have to pick a restaurant that we all can go to do we go do we go to the river house or do we go to brax i would say let's go to brax because i haven't been to the river house in six months so i want to keep it that way <laughs> the less i go there the better exactly They're like hey there's mark mason and then they want to chit chat you and you got stuff to do yeah, I don't know how to use the iPads anymore. I'm like, you know. <laughs> That's awesome. So what do you have for questions for me? You want to ask me any direct questions before we get off here? You know, uh Mark, I mean I mean I think the I, I think the questions are answered by the questions. I, I mean you've overcome hurdles and obstacles and you kept you kept a vision. You understand what I'm saying? And, and the other thing is that I don't know if we talked about it or even addressed it, is that no one does it alone. Yeah, you're not doing this thing all by yourself, and I know you recently just got married to your partner, yeah. that has been by your side. And I know a lot of guys are like, oh, behind every man is a good woman. No, 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 no. They're right by your side, and she's right by your side, and she's a she beast is. like you. She is a she lioness is. that comes with the lion. Um, you know, I, I for me, Mark Mason was there uh, during my doc time, and I'll tell my story another time. But 
I remember I used to call him all the time. Say, hey, can we close the deal? I need a little money. He's like, yeah, we don't do that, dog. See you later, bye. <laughs> you know what I mean? He just he hit me in the head with a velvet brick, and I used to get pissed on him. Like, you know, who's this prick? He's got all this money. Can he help me out? He's not going to help me out. He's going to say, you know what? You got to go through it. And I, and I did. And I tell Mark all, all the time, it's called a controlled burn. So any of you firefighters out there, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. So then you guys, <laughs> whenever you guys see a fireman say, hey, excuse me, what's a controlled burn? And they'll tell you. Well, it's just when we burn stuff to find out what's going on underneath. I was in a controlled burn because it was some shit in me that had to come out. Guess what? I'm here and I ain't leaving. And I'm bringing all my summit panel with me. And we're going to be kicking people in the teeth and hitting them in the head with a velvet brick. It's facts. Let's go. It is what it is. Let's so, go. Mark Mason, uh, from the bottom of my heart, uh, I appreciate you. Uh, you're the best person that uh, has come into my life as far as business is concerned. I don't take uh, I don't take offense to the fact that you're 20 years younger than I am because I would I would ride with you, dog. I'd be like, okay, Mark said I should do this, and I would do it. Because I know there's probably other 50 year olds who would be like, who's this prick? Well, okay, you can look. He's got about how many employees you got at RCL? 48. Thank you. Okay. And how many at the River House? Probably 50, 60. Okay. So you basically you're running this corporation with over 100 employees. Yes or yes? Yeah. Yeah. It's facts. And he's 31. So understand that Mark Mason is a pink elephant. And we'll tell you that story another time. Did you know who else is a pink elephant, ladies and gentlemen? Um, guy named Elon Musk, guy named Jeff Bezos, uh, <laughs> Steve Jobs was yep. and still is a pink elephant. Anyone who's broken the paradigm of going, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get a job, and then I'm gonna get, then I'm gonna go to work, and then I'm gonna get married, and on the weekends we can go to Bed Bath Beyond and Home Depot, and then we can watch um, Ozark and Yellowstone and talk about it on Monday. You guys suck. Get it together, because otherwise you're gonna be in that rat race for a long time. Guess who's not going to be in a rat race? That guy and this guy. I think that little Lee him guy's in the rat race, but he might be out soon. He is a halfway <laughs> decent golfer too. And I mean half because he's small. Just saying. He'll be mad later on, but he'll get over it. <laughs> <laughs> Mark uh, Mason, I thank you, my friend. I really, really do. No problem. And 